video. There we go. So we're on? Yep. What was that down there? What's that? Try another way of going during your broadcast. No, we don't want to do that. What time we got? So we're a on minute. early because Doug's been a little impatient and wanted to uh, make sure we were on and ready. So and it's a good thing I did because she was not couldn't get on, and I had to help her get on. No. So here we are, and hopefully you guys can join us and see us. I think we're early, aren't we? No, it's after 7. Wait a minute, let's see. 7 to 1, okay. Hey, <clears throat> Nicole's on, so at least we know we're live. Oh, good. Thank you, Nicole. All right. Well, we did our boat trip from Rhode Island to Florida. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of good times and some rough days, but we made it. We're in Fort Pierce, Florida right now. Um, you want to get the book out? If you want it, I'm going to show Which you. Which book? Oh, oh, how we found places, this book that she's going to show you. This book is phenomenal. Does it come up backwards? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have taken a picture of it. Anyway, hopefully for you guys it's not backwards. It is. But hold it up. It is backwards. <laughs> All right. This is what my wife used the whole trip to read Bridges. Uh, mile Mark is where we were. It will I'm, show on you. On my GPS, it tells me what Mile Mark we're on. And in the Intercoastal Waterway, the Mile Mark is our statutory miles, not nautical miles, which is because we're within the confines of the land of the United States. So it becomes So this necessary. is sort of what it looks like it will show you the different cities and then as you go in it will show you as you go through each bridge, the height, um, all kinds of different information. This was like our Bible through the whole trip. <clears throat> now I'll show you our entire route. Um, you gotta spin it around. I know. All right, I don't know how good this is going to come out. You're going to have to hold it up. Let's see. All right, let me... Bear with us. We're new at this. No, we're not. Oh, you've done it? You're an expert? Yeah. I'm, I'm very new at this because I've never take done this before. Take it off the keyboard. Oh, take it off the keyboard, she says. Hang on. Hold on. Technical difficulties. <laughs> it's stuck. All right. Get rid of that keyboard. Put that there. Anyway... I know, I'm going to have to get behind it because i I got to hold it up against the camera. So let's see. Can it's you, not going to be yeah. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, oh, there you go. That looks good. All right, no, 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 just um, just hold it down. We'll tip this down. No, you, no, no. Don't. Just go. Talk. All right. So we started here in Rhode Island, ran down um, Long Island Sound. Our first night was in... Behind, behind the Statue of Liberty in New Jersey. Uh, the next day is when we hit the big storm. So we bailed out in the Manasquam River, which is right here. Uh, and we got stuck there three days because of the storm. Our next day, we made up some time. I think we went like probably well, 150 miles. Well, no, we were stuck miles. in New Jersey for three days. Three days, yeah. But then, that, then our next leg, that was our second leg, this is our third leg, we went all the way down uh, the New Jersey coast to Cape May. That's Cape May right there. Then we went, maybe I should use a pointer. Then we went up the Delaware River, and we spent the night, which this was all one, one trip. I think it was like 150-some-odd miles. That's the C&D Canal, the uh, Chesapeake-Delaware Canal. That's where we spent, spent the night. Kind of a neat little canal. We actually hit a log uh, stick in the water right on the corner of this canal. There was kind of a lot of debris there, and I was nervous if we did any damage. Anyway, the next day we flew. We went to the Solomon Islands, which was a fairly short run. Solomon's Island. Solomon's Island. And that was a cool place. We would have liked to have stayed there a little longer. But this whole trip turned out to be a lot of running and not a lot of time to see things. Uh, after we stopped, because we'd run till about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and 
we'd eat, and by then we would just crash. Next leg from Solomon's was to Norfolk, uh, Virginia. That was kind of cool, but not not as cool as I thought it was going to be. Um, Norfolk, we went down. Oops, don't touch it, Doug. And we actually right at Norfolk along along here we have uh that's where we did the lock and that was that was kind of fun but the lock was sort of disappointing because it only raised us up like a foot so it it didn't like really raise us much <clears throat> excuse me then the next next leg uh, brought us where'd we go where'd we go the next leg um, where would we go to the second? Uh, Don't look at me. This is your gig. Anyway, we oh, d did we make it all the way to Bof Bofit or whatever that is? Bofit. I think we went all the way down here to Bofit. Um, yeah, we did because we didn't stay at a um, coin jock, which we kind of wanted to. And we spent the night there. That was kind of a cool place. It was a nice boardwalk. Um, and then from coin jock, we went with... We go. Wilmington. No, I know. Yeah, both it. Uh, then we went. Do you have that sheet? Give me that. Hang on. I'm. I forget where we went. We went somewhere. All right. Ah, this will. This will do it. Okay. <clears throat> so, oh, from Norfolk we went to the Alligator River, which was wasn't <laughs> wasn't. A real cool place, but it, it, in a sense, it was. We had a great sandwich there and stuff, but it was kind of open. It was just a little but that was also overnight the canal too. Yeah, that was. Well, no, the next day, both both to Southport, North Carolina, uh, which no, is no the Alligator River to Beaufort. We hit that canal that was really cool that we took the cool pictures of. Yeah, let me see. It was the Alligator Pungo Canal. Oh, that, yeah, that that was that was really neat. And actually, we had a bunch of those kind of things along the way. Um, both it. We posted pictures on the blog, but we, and we labeled them all meticulously, and you don't get to see the labels, so unfortunately. Oh, I'm jumping ahead here. That That's, um, that's Southport. From Southport, we went to... Wait a minute. No, it isn't. Where's Southport? This is Southport, I believe. Let me see. This is Southport. I think a mock is in the wrong place. Anyway, from from Southport, we went to Georgetown, South Carolina. Um, then from Georgetown, we went to Charleston. And Charleston is with my mock. Here we go. This is where Charleston is. And this is where we tried to make up some time. We were going to blow by Georgia and just head straight for St. Mary's in Georgia, which is right on the line of Florida. And we came out of Charleston, and we got the, we were getting the snot kicked out of us. And we had like about a six-hour day of doing that. So we actually went 20 miles from our marina out, the, out here, to turn around and go back 20 miles, so we actually lost 40 miles that day. To start right, right back where we were, and then, then we ran down inside. And I'll tell you, inside it's really calm most, most of the way. There's some big wide open areas, but for the most part, it was, it was super calm and, and pretty easy. Some narrow things. Uh, from Charleston, we went to Hilton Head, uh, and we stayed a night there, and Hilton Head was, was a lot of fun. That was Harbortown. Harbor, yeah, we stayed at Harbor Town, right, where they golf and stuff. And then from um, Hilton Head, we went to Brunswick, Georgia. Wait a minute, where's... I don't have these on here. Savannah. Oops. I should, I should have put little icons on this where, where we were. Oh, it is Brunswick. Then from Brunswick, we went to, next leg was to St. Augustine, Florida, which is, I believe... That was really cool. We wish we could have stayed longer there. This is St. Mary's Inlet, where we were trying to go offshore to, to and then St. Augustine, that's, uh, that'll be right here. 
where we ended up going inside to yeah St. Augustine I'd love to go back and spend probably four days and thank there. you Kim we learned that it's the oldest city I had to teach Kim something on, on, on her city she thought Boston was the oldest city and it's not even on the top ten list so uh, thank you Kim for letting me educate you on that Anyway, uh, then we went from St. Augustine to Indian Harbor Beach, Florida, which is just past, about 20 miles or so past Cape Canaveral. We went down here. In the, and these are wide open areas, by the way. They look narrow on this, but these are like big bays. And it, you can't leave the intercoastal. Uh, we ran 10 feet of water, basically, a thousand miles <laughs> uh, and you leave it and you, you can run aground and it's wild because you on some at, some views you can't even see shore on the other side oh Kim commented oh, oh Kim it, it's a it's a it's okay if uh, you didn't know it was the oldest city <laughs> anyways so we so we ran down here and from St. Augustine to Indian Head this is Cape Canaveral we, we passed, and this is where we stayed right, right here the last night before last. And then the next, last leg of the journey was a short one to um, where we are now, which is right here. And that's uh, Fort Pierce, and that little boat right there, that's where we're at right now, right there. So how there many miles to. did we travel? So everyone wants to know miles, gasoline, all that, all that fun stuff. Hang on, I gotta get back in. I am back. Um. So, excuse the excuse the old man spectacles. Here's my. Uh... Doug is extremely prepared. So this, anyway, I want you to know. <clears throat> so. Number of miles we traveled, nautical miles we traveled, was this. It's going to be backwards. Is it backwards on you guys? Yes. Oh. Well, put it in a mirror and you can read it. It's 1,448 miles, 0.3 nautical miles, and it's 1,666.67 statutory miles. Whoops. Don't hold them up. Just say it. So that's how many miles we went. How much did we burn? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, how much? Oh, how long did it take us? So the time it took us to do the whole trip to run that, and this was a happy, happy face, that's Linus, in case you guys don't know who he is, was 74 hours and 48 minutes was how long the trip took for our actual running of the boat. Now, the expensive pot. How many gallons did we burn? So, we burned 2,449 gallons of fuel. And I got a little sad face because it wasn't cheap. But it wasn't as bad as I budgeted for. So, in a way, that's a good thing. So... That was that was a trip. So Sue wants to know if uh, we're taking questions. We are taking we questions. We are taking questions. And Dave wants to know what's the plan now. The boat is going to stay oh here in Florida. <laughs> it's been a tell, whole. Tell it's them, been two days of craziness it, tell trying what we've been to. Going we got here yesterday. My wife didn't plan this out as well yeah. as me. We got here yesterday. We asked about pulling the boat. We were told they couldn't pull the boat for three months. They didn't really have a slip available for us, so they sent us to another marina. We booked a time for November for them to pull us, but we ha someone would have to be here to drive the boat. So that was either going to be Doug flying back down to Florida, or we were going to have to hire a captain to drive the boat from our slip here, literally across the lagoon. Unlike at home, where the marinas will come in and pick your boat up and drive it over with a little skiff. 
They don't do that down here for some reason. Yeah. So we spent today running around trying to figure out where the boat was going to be. Luckily, we went to the marina that we thought was going to pull the boat and store it for us. Turns out they don't store. They only pull to have work done, and then they put you right back in the water. <laughs> so then we were back over here at the marina where we're Be staying begging now. Ag begging again to get... And they are actually going to pull us November 22nd. We have to hire a captain to literally drive it from the slip to the travel lift area. Which, which is about probably... 100 feet. 30, 30 <laughs> boat lengths of travel. I got to hire a guy to run the boat over to and then we're then that person. And the same thing going in the water. Yeah. So the boat's gonna stay here. We are coming back in February for a wedding, and at that point we'll put the boat back in the water. We're hoping to, after the wedding, take a trip side trip to the Bahamas weather if the weather we is good and everything. Um, and then the boat will stay here until April, and then Doug will bring it back. Um, with Fort, a different crew, not me. Fort Pierce is a launching point to the Bahamas for a lot of a lot of uh, boaters because one, it's got an easy channel out to the ocean here. A lot of the channels down here in Florida are real dicey to get in. You're basically surfing your way in, and this one's a really easy one, and it's real close to the Bahamas. I think it's about a hundred nautical miles to uh, Freeport from here. And that's, that for us isn't, isn't all that long considering what we've been doing. Uh, if we go down to Miami, the Bimini is only like 47 nautical miles. I can do that in like three hours, two and a half, three hour, three hour run. But Miami's quite a bit further down south. So we haven't decided how we're going to do that yet. Or, and again, weather's going to be the, the factor because that's all offshore and we have to get back. Um, so what else? Is so there a couple of questions. Sue asked. Um, yeah, we did leave the ocean and came into the ICW, which is a more protected route. And so if it's really blowing offshore, you can still travel down the ICW. Um, and are we glad? Carol wants to know. Are we glad we did the trip? I am. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah. I only wish I had more time because we we had to go so fast. We didn't have any time to spend at any one place. And I know, Carol, I apologize. We were trying to find your island, but you're reading these charts, and the charts don't tell you what island. It just shows you a massive land, and it's kind of tricky to find out the island unless you go to your phone. And we went through your your area looking, and I don't, I don't know. I'm sure we saw it. But in that area where, where we were looking was a very nice area, by the way. Uh, so I'm sure wherever that island was is a really pretty area because that section was was really nice it was one there's been there were really really nice sections and then they were kind of not so nice but overall we, they were nice. we definitely wish we'd had more time there were places doug wanted to go to fort McHenry where the star spangled banner was written um we kind of had to lop that off the schedule when we got stuck in new jersey for three days um i wanted to see the statue of liberty and that we were trying to beat a weather window and that didn't actually work out for us either but so there were things we sort of cut out um to try to make up for some of the time that we had lost in the beginning um saint augustine we really wish we could have stayed there a few more days it's gorgeous and you know point jork was one that yeah, we, we had to blow through we there. got there so early that it was like a two-hour boat ride that day to get to coin jork so we couldn't really like stop but everybody says, you know, you got to get a T-shirt that says you were in Coin Jar. It's a little jerkwater town, but it's cool as anything. It runs both sides of the, this little canal, and, and there's dockage, like one long pier that goes probably, I don't know, two miles long or a mile long or so. I'm not even sure how long, but it was, it was pretty neat. You know, it looked like just a cool little town, and we had to, we had to miss it, and... That kind of that kind of hurt because that was one of one of the things I wanted to see, but um, probably what were, what were your favorite um, stopovers? I, Charleston, I always love. I think that's a great place to visit. 
And we got to see Kim and Miles, so that yeah. was an added bonus. By the that. way, Miles, I got the I got the middle. He didn't get wiper, the scooters fixed, but he fix. got the windshield wiper yeah, fixed. Yeah, we found the set screw, and that fixed my middle windshield wiper. So that was one thing so. we actually did cross off our list today. Um, I would love to have seen Saint uh, stayed in Saint Augustine longer. I thought that yeah. was a really cool place. Coin Jock, we wish we could have stayed there. Saint Augustine, they have a a walking path. Or just people. It's like, like a it's, walking mall. Yeah, and outdoors, and it's long. I mean, I don't know. It went for blocks and it, blocks and blocks. It had to be over a mile long. I don't know. We just kept walking, and, and tons of people are just a neat. And the architecture. It was place. just a really yeah. cool place. We were fortunate to be in the marina that was right there. And the um, marina, yeah, the marina was perfectly located, but we had issues. We had to run a generator all night at the marina, which kind of ticked me off because their shore power and they kept telling me it was my boat that wasn't working i'm like well i just came from rhode island and we've been stopping in marinas all the way down and we haven't had an issue oh your boat's not dead you got to replace the your shore power to your boat and i got one that automatically feeds into the boat and they basically lied to us the guy plugs in i had two other shore power cords with me he plugs them in without plugging the other end in anything. And he goes, oh, the, the cord, the cord's fine. It's got to be something in your boat. I'm like, how do you plug it in without having the other end plugged into I don't know. I'm not an electrician. But he said, that's how we test them. But anyway, so we went up to get a credit because we have to pay for the shore power. And while she was up there, there was another guy with the same issue we had. And then we read on the, this... Um, chart plot a thing I have you can read write ups on all the marinas and, and things and other people have had the issue at that particular marina so it's the marina that's got the, the problem and she asked him if uh, you know if this ever happened because, oh, the guy goes oh never 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 has happened before <laughs> it's like okay you just had two that day but we anyway, got to the next marina God, and the, the plug worked fine so that was good Dave wanted to know if we had any damage we don't know exactly what we hit um, and we think we hit it on the side of the hull um, more no, than underneath. No, it, it got underneath. But it, 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 I, there were like sticks. It was the storm surge from the gale that kind of blew through when we were in New Jersey. So it brought a lot of garbage off the beach and, and trees and, and branches yeah, that, and all kinds that of stuff. lead up to from up to Delaware, just kind of shortly before the canal, we started seeing a bunch of debris there. And while I was making the corner, there was like three sailboats that I was trying to get around in front. Because if you're behind them, you can't really pass them easy without waking them. So I was trying to get around them before they got into the canal where, where I had more room. And there was a bunch of... And we were looking for the sticks. We knew the sticks sticks were around there. And all of a sudden, boom, boom, never saw the thing. And we just heard it hit. And now you're paranoid. You know, you're, oh, am I feeling a vibration? Is there something different with a boat? And... And I think I don't think it did anything, but we won't know until we pull the boat. But it seemed to run fine, the, you know, the whole trip. That was pretty early on in the in the trip. But um, yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of debris. I mean, that was probably the only place we really saw a bunch of debris. Um, down in Florida, a couple spots we had um, the stuff the manatees eat, the floating seaweedy things. It's grass. You know, yeah, it's like a grass. Sea grass. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know what it is down here, but you know that whatever it is they eat, I think. And it, it would scare you because you thought it was a stick or, or whatever, so you're constantly, you know, swerving around stuff. And it was just grass, you know, so it really wouldn't have done anything, but you don't know. And I'll tell you, there's not a lot of room to for error. <laughs> I had to go around... Uh, you know, some people in fishing boats and stuff. And if you leave the, the ICW, it, it gets shallow. And this boat draws four feet, two inches. And a couple of times I, I, I'd be in eight feet, six feet, a couple, couple of times, which that doesn't leave me much room at all. And I'm doing 26 knots, by the way, through all this. So you're trying to make corners and stuff and following Bob 423's uh, route. And at high speed, it's kind of hard to hard to follow at times one thing we did learn though they're very polite down here at home you know we just kind of blow by everybody and not here Florida. 
We have Florida's a different Florida. <laughs> they're on their own. And they're, they're down they're the wack. ICW, wack it was very courteous. You always called, and yeah. you know, if you wanted to pass someone and say, "Hey, is it okay if I do a slow pass on your port, your starboard?" Yeah. And they'll always come back and say, "Sure, go yeah. ahead." Thank you, thank you for you know. Yep. We, and we and they usually pull o- pull over to give you a little more room. You kind of creep up, I and mean, this boat pushes a pretty big wake, so it's kind of hot on sailboats and stuff. So, so. If if they're smart, they they usually will slow down too. So if they slow down, I can go down idle and just kind of creep by them, and then I wait for the, them to get into my wake. And one thing that I wish they knew is to turn into the wake because they run parallel with you, and you got to go like a football field past them before they're in the wake. And some a couple of guys got it, and as soon as you pass them, they they actually will will turn in. And you, then you can go on your way, you know, because now they're behind you. But, um, but yeah, they were in, when we hit Florida, oh, God, it became a zoo. We were on this long oh, canal area that's basically a leave-no-wake canal for, like, seven miles. I think I even did a video of this. And these boats, they're just flying by us. One kid was on a, one of those inner tube things with three yeah, kids on Yeah, they were on towing it. people. One guy in the boat with his three kids in the back in this... Oh God, I'm, I'm like these people are crazy down here. And another thing, the fish right in the uh, in the middle of the channel of the ICW, and you're on this narrow thing. You can barely pass two boats as it is. We had a fishing trawler, a, a shrimp boat, that is in the channel. We're trying to get around them, and I couldn't go outside the channel because I'd be on ground. And this guy wouldn't move or anything. And and literally, I I was like scratching along his. His outrigger. Luckily, his outrigger, you could kind of tell where the net net was. They kind of drag him fairly close to the boat. But I'm like, dude, you can't be fishing. In <laughs> I don't know. So they're, they're a little different. That wasn't here, though. That was in South, South Carolina. That was so, out of Beaufort. Yeah. Beaufort. So Mary wants to know if there's any more seawater coming in. No, I. Oh yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> before we left, we discovered that. Yeah, we that... should go. We should go into all the problems we had. Just, like two weeks before we were due to leave on this trip, I lost the steering on the boat. Um, my mechanic, Nick, greatest mechanic out there. I'll Thank tell you, you, Nick. Yes, if he's watching, I don't know, but um, managed to get us a pot from California and replace the piston, so I got the steering back. That was one. Our grounding plate on this boat keeps falling off every year. It eats away the bolts. It's two little tiny through bolts that, that are about the size of a pencil that hold it on. Last year when it fell off, I had the marina run a, I had an, ele- an electrical engineer come down and run a thing on the boat to see if what's eating away, why, you know, if there's anything happening that's chewing away these, these bolts because the plates just fall off. Then the boat starts sinking because I got this little pencil pinhole in the bottom of the boat and it's f- squirting water up about that high and it doesn't come in fast, but it comes. In, it still comes in, coming the in. The build can take care. So I have these little dowels at home that are like pencils. So I whittled them down and I pump, 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 and I banged it in. We just went fourteen. We went the whole way. Fourteen hundred miles of wood with it in, in there, and the thing's holding. And it's going to hold all the way back, you know. So uh, yeah, we had a. What was another issue? Oh, our a TV. We haven't had a TV since we left. We got to New York. We had. A gazillion Wait, channels. Nick installed, our mechanic installed yeah. a brand new TV antenna. At the dock, we had 68 <laughs> channels, came in crystal clear. We were so excited. We've never had a TV on the boat. And we've had boat. them, but you never they get never any work. channels. It's usually DVDs. So we get to New York. It worked great in New York. We were like, yes, this is going to be awesome, at least at night when you're, you know, resting or whatever. You can watch TV, catch the news, whatever. So we got stuck in that really bad storm on the way down through New Jersey, pull in, we're in a marina, we don't get a single channel. And we think, is it the antenna? Did we get water in it? What? So he was calling. It's under warranty. Nick yeah. Nick has ordered a new antenna and uh, they're going to send it to, when we bring the boat back, we're going to change it out because I wasn't going to take it apart and ship it back, but... Yeah, it's, it's so <laughs> it's been hit or miss. We and it's funny. We get channels during the day, and then at night when we actually want to sit down and watch TV, you get nothing. In Wi-Fi, non-existent. People at Cove Haven that don't get Wi-Fi, don't you complain. Don't get it. 
the whole coast of the United States, there's no Wi-Fi in any of these marinas. The blog posting we, we has do, been disastrous. She couldn't do of... any of the videos because the videos I took, we were supposed to put up on the blog. And we couldn't do it, and we still can't do it, even here. It's I not think we've here. hit two marinas where we've had really good Wi-Fi and been able to get caught up on blog posts. I've tried to post some of them to Facebook, but it, it was a Can disaster. Yeah, I've been reading them as we okay. go. Okay. Jack wants to know if you lost your razor. I look like you, Jack. Is that Jack Coffee? Yes. Okay. You like it? Do you like it, though, Jack? I do not. So it will be coming off shortly. I figured, I figured, because I didn't shave the first night. So then when we hit that that gale, it, it wasn't a gale at the time we hit it, but it, it shortly bad. after it turned into a gale. It was still pretty nasty. We almost rolled the boat. It was it, it got scary on one wave. One particular wave was real bad. But um, after that, I said, you know what? If I'm going to go through hell, I'm going to look like hell, and I just started growing it. And, I don't know. I, I actually shaved today. I, I, I put an edge. I did you, edge it you, a couple you, of days for you, ago. For you guys, I, I was going to leave it all scruffy and stuff, but see, uh, I think so. That was good. Let us give what you the think, guys? Let us give you the update on our scooters. We bought oh. these electric scooters with seats for the trip. Fold up. We bought waterproof bags. We had them on the back of about eleven hundred dollars a scooter. I think we had them, you know, in the stern of the boat during that really rough weather. But they were in the waterproof bags. We never checked them. Been fun couple of days we used it no, in, in that, we used in that, them in that yeah gale. we used That's, them in new york at liberty whole, at everything. liberty park they worked great the next day when we left they were in the back of the boat we got a lot we had water just pouring off the back of the t-top it was like a waterfall so we took them out of the bag when we got a new to new jersey to go take a run somewhere and they won't start they won't turn both, on, they make funny them. noises or whatever. So we contacted the company, which is in China. I was on the phone at 2 a.m. trying to get them to send us a part. We paid $50 to have a part overnight that took almost a week to get here. We had it shipped to the house. Derek had to get it overnighted. Um, to Kim's. Yeah, Kim to our Miles friend in, in Charleston. Charleston. So we made it and that God far them, without so them. Brought us the pot. So we got the parts. Doug and Miles worked on them for I don't know how long. And we put one together. Yeah. We turned it on. Everything came on, including the horn. And the horn. And the horn shut wouldn't off. shut off. And this horn is like a fire alarm noise horn. It is loud as anything, and it just would stay. And I just told my. I said. Turn this thing off, put it away, that's it. I'm so done. we put them away, <laughs> never to be seen again for the rest of the trip. They've been down in the, the hold. So, uh, today, so today we decided we <laughs> didn't want to the leave them on a boat because they have batteries and we weren't sure with the heat how that would react or whatever. So we rented a car today and we drove to the UPS store to ship them home because they're not working. We either have to have them ship back to China or somebody's got to fix it for us, something. So we went to the UPS store, and it cost us almost as much as the one scooter to well, ship them back. $450, I think it was, per scooter to, to ship, ship them, them back. These are broken scooters. In the scooter. We should have just thrown, dumped it. I, I did it because I need them home. Hopefully I'll get them fixed, but I think it would have been easy just to throw them overboard and buy, buy new ones. Uh, but anyway, so if you ever do the trip, don't get anything electric on the boat. Scooter, or if you do, put it down below so it won't get wet. Buy a folding bike, that because a bike isn't going to. If it gets wet, it doesn't matter. You just it might rust, but you know it'll still work. So we went the lazy man's way, and it, it, we ended up paying for Didn't it. Work. But yeah, it was it was a pain in the butt. So a couple of things that we had written down that we wanted to talk about. One thing is your vessel height. Um, oh, it was yeah. important to know the book the height of your boat from your water line essential, to the top essential tells you all the heights of the bridges it tells you the heights so does, of the bridges so does my, so does my uh um so aqu and, we um, only had to have a couple of bridges open and the book will tell you whether it's on demand on the hour on the half hour um if it stays open unless there's a train coming through um and they also have number boards as you approach a bridge to let you know the height um, available. I, I need a 14. I, I rode the whole way um, with, the antennas down. with the antennas down. Once once we hit um, the intercoastal, I had the antennas down. Uh, so I need a 14 foot clearance 
for that 23 feet if the antennas were up and most of the bridges we didn't have to wait for openings but uh north carolina was a pain in the ass because they would only open on certain hours so if you got there early you had to just sit there they even the guy wouldn't open even if there's no cars coming when you got to south carolina in, in florida they pretty much would open up the man actually florida i don't think we had any bridges that were gave us an no. issue um but uh you know if you're, a sail, if you're a sailboat and there are a lot of a lot a lot of sailboats doing the trip but you can't sail you have to motor so so if you plan on sailing in the intercoastal you'll never do it the currents were pretty there were some real nasty currents um this boat isn't too bad with hand, handling it with the currents but some of the cross rips when you're in when you're in narrow space where it's pushing you most of them would run parallel with with you but um those sometimes you'd start feeling yourself getting thrust over but a lot of those bays like albemarle sound and stuff they're huge i mean when i say huge you couldn't see across we'd be out in the middle of this freaking bay and you can't see land it's like further than block island way further you know and here we are we have to follow this stupid channel and all you see is water and if you leave the channel it, it, you know you, you probably wouldn't hit but it go down to like six feet deep in the middle of nowhere you, uh, I don't, it just kind of kind of kind of a strange feeling you know um, but but it, we made pretty good time actually there were some areas I didn't I wanted I forgot to do I wanted to do an average uh, cruising time on it because a lot of it was up and down because every time there was a guy fishing, we'd slow the boat down so we wouldn't wake him. Boat to the dock. Then we'd speed up. Then you'd catch up to a guy and we'd have to slow down and do a slow pass. Then we'd speed up again. So a lot of that fuel <laughs> probably is just start ups and start downs, you know. Um, but that's the way they do it here, and it's it's kind of nice for them. It's a lot more polite, I guess, and a lot of people. They always thank you. Even if you wake them, you know, if you ask, they it doesn't seem to bother them. But if you don't ask, then they get all ticked off with you. So, it, you know, it was, it was a learning curve, which I, I saw that in a video, so I knew that going into it that you ask. Okay, a um, couple of questions. Yep. They want to know what the weather here in Florida is. 80, 84 today. It's going to be 89 it's tomorrow. Been very, today was the first day it wasn't really humid. The Yesterday Water and the temperature day temperature here is 81 degrees the yeah. where we're sitting right now. We are supposed to be getting this storm water, by the way. tomorrow. Um, and we've heard different things. There's two parts of the storm. The first one is going to hit at like 1 to 4 tomorrow afternoon and then it's supposed to let up and then it's supposed to storm tomorrow night from like 8 to 11. They've said 40, 50, 60 mile an hour wind gusts and all of that with tornadoes and I think it's all more north of us though. Yeah. The, the, the meat of it's not. And we're tucked into to a marina that. that's pretty uh, oh, this thing, sheltered, this thing, so we're not going this thing too is, far. We're in like mangroves. And, and we're on a dock, so it's. Yeah. We're tied to two poles at the back. Friday, we have to move it to a different slip to leave it because I'll tell you, this marina, the nicest people, they have gone out of their way bent over backwards to help us uh to try to get us to winterize the boat and all that someone all might that. have wanted to plan a little bit better i had no idea that <laughs> hauling a boat was going to be an issue on this trip so if you're going to do the trip make sure you if you plan on pulling the boat or leaving the boat have that up front because we went in and, and they told us three months out and then they then the other place told us oh we can do it in three weeks so now i got to pay for a slip here for three weeks to get it hauled. But they've been and very then, accommodating. And then that place said, oh, no, we don't store it. We, we already talked about this. To... Next subject. Yeah, all right. We'll, anyway. we'll get going on this one. Doug might want to talk about driving with the autopilot on. Oh, I... There was a lesson this, to this be This was learned. Nick, my mechanic, after I fixed the steering. We, we left, um, I don't know where we were. That what was that little... Indian River. Indian River. Um, oh, no, it wasn't there, but anyway, go. Anyway, you... <laughs> We pull out of this this area, and it's a very industrial area. They're Runs dredging it and stuff. So we're pulling out. So I got like kind of a long straight run of, of idle speed. So I, I hit my autopilot. Now, my autopilot, you can't turn the wheel to knock it out of autopilot. You have to disarm it, and then you can get control of the boat which because it's an old system. So, so anyway, 
I'm going, we, we just left the marina and we're putting along. So I'm trying to adjust. I'm turning the wheel. I'm like, oh no, this thing's not working. So I'm, I'm turning. I'm like, He's oh, here, panicking. We, here we go. What Nick, what Nick just fixed isn't, isn't working, right? So, so I tell, I say, call the marina back. I got to turn around with the motors and just run it back with the motors. We didn't get very far from the marina. And, you know, we've got to get a mechanic or whatever, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, she calls them. They said, well, they don't have a mechanic till Monday. This is like Saturday. So, so, so uh, I'm, turning, I'm, I'm turning the boat around to go back to the marina. And I notice I have a rudder indicator. And I notice a rudder indicator is compensating. And I said, you dumbass. So anyway, I had it on autopilot. So I go, Don, I can fix this. Boom, boom. <laughs> off we went. He was panicking so anyway, about I, it. I'm too. like, you got to be kidding me. I lost stare, staring. But, uh, uh, anyway. Question. We are actually flying out Saturday, Saturday morning, morning at 7 to go home. Um, so we'll probably have a very bumpy trip on the way because I think we're going to follow this storm up the coast. But that's okay. Yeah, well, hopefully they fly around it. And that. So what else do we have here? Oh, that Bob423, I actually got to meet him. He, he's the one, this is Aquamaps. So Aquamaps he, is a, an app that he loaded onto his iPad. You, you see the red and the green in that blue track on there? That's Bob's actual route that he ran from Norfolk, Virgin, Virginia, all the way down to, I, I believe it ends around Miami. Uh, it doesn't go to the Keys, but... That's his actual boat route. And then you can download on top of that the, the soundings, the NOAA soundings, which if you go to Google Bob423 uh, on YouTube, and he's got all these videos telling you how to do this, and this guy's like a legend down here. And so I did that, and I, I got this Aquaman. And that's all you have to follow. You stay on his course, you're not going to hit. We didn't hit bottom anyway, and I'll tell you, I can see what people hit all the time because there's nothing forgiving around. It is soft though if you do hit. It's not. It's not like home where it's rock and stuff. But but uh, it's an awesome thing in that you just stay in the green and get out of the red and and it basically gives you a highway the whole way down. And some of the corners were like 90 degree. It's wild. You're out in the middle of what looks like an ocean. And all of a sudden, the course tells you to turn turn into those trees over there. You go, you you turn at these trees, and then you see this little canal that's dug in, and you you're like next thing you know, you you out of this big wide open space and in in this narrow canal. But I'll tell you, this this thing was a godsend. And the cool thing was, right after I I did my video on about Bob, the next day that night we're tied up at at the one of the marinas. In one of the other boats that we were kind of following that we talked to on the radio because he, he did um teeth clean for, for kids smiles sail for the, smiles was the name of it he was tied up at the marina next to us so i was talking to him and, and he goes oh do you use the bob 423 and i go yeah he goes that's him right in front of you right smack in front of my boat so i go oh i gotta go Doug over there of course him. dawn dawn won't go over there she thinks i'm a stalker so anyway i, I go over there i see his wife sitting there and she goes, oh, he's up in the laundry doing laundry. I said, Bob, four, two, three's doing laundry. He can't be doing laundry. What are you talking about? He's too famous to do laundry. So anyway, he came back later on that night, and I go back down, and I, I go, I gotta got to shake you a hand. Got his picture with right? him. Yep, I got a picture with him. He, got gave, his he card. gave me his card. And I didn't give, I forgot about our cards. I, I wish I had I wish I had given him Dawn made up cards. Look at that, huh? I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's see. See? And then on the back, it's got, you know... Our contact. Uh, our stuff. contact stuff. And Bob's got that on, on his boat, so he gave me he gave me his card. So you would have thought he was meeting, like, a rock star. He's like Bob Orr of the Intercoastal Waterway. What are you talking about? The, the guy's a legend. He's written up in every book. He's in this... He's this, mentioned in this ICW He's mentioned book. in this book time and time again, you know? That any any shoaling area that's a, that's a follow bad area. Bob four, two, said, three. Follow Bob four two three's track and and look up the Noah sound, sounding thing, all through this book. So okay, it's like Shakespeare. Let's move on. Anyway, what, what else? Channel markers reversed. Oh yeah, yeah. It gets some 
some areas it was the weird. classic red right returning doesn't always apply we're returning from Rhode Island to Florida so that you're running basically the whole way with the red it's red the, right returning to Texas right. there you go okay it goes all the way around Florida and up to Texas. but anyway so there's a bunch of spots where there's an ocean route that they use the same buoys for so the, the act they, they'll actually reverse on you and the red will now be on your port and it can get I mean it's pretty easy with I the do, book I do tells a you night. if you follow the book the ICW book that tells you when they revert but there back were, and I thought everything. there was only like two areas there, I mean, there were like three four, or four yeah there was like four areas where it happened and it wasn't bad because I had a route and I had Bob's route so I was just kind of looking down following Bob Bob's route the whole way so it it kind of showed you what side to take them on um, we also uh, oh in the intercoastal waterways have their marker buoys have a, either a either a square or, or a rectangle yellow indicating that it's the intra coastal water I can say it wrong all the time it's with an a but um and I'll tell you it's, these buoys are so freaking far apart if you don't have a course <laughs> You're looking at the next buoy. Talk it's like on range the horizon. Markers at the end of time. Oh yeah, that, that place that I was turning around. There, there are a couple range markers, which, if you know what a range marker is, I know most of the boaters will. But it's you, you line up. There's there's a there's a high one in the back and a low one in front, and that tells you. And you, and you line these these two range markers up, and that tells you you're in the channel. And uh, we saw like. Probably there three of them. A lot them. more as we got further south. Yeah, yeah. They were mainly for ships, though. I mean, where, where, for me, it, it really didn't matter because you know it was shallows. It was really like for the shipping things. But it was pretty wild because they they put one like out in the out in the water, and then one's the other one's way on land, like two miles away. They are freaking big. Di I thought they'd be close together, but but uh, it was kind of neat to see that. I've never seen. I've seen them in books, but I've never actually seen one. Um, what were we talking about on the bridges and boat ramps? Oh yeah, yeah. We we kind of dialed in that. Pretty much when you come to a bridge, they they always tell you to slow down and leave no wake, and and you should because there's almost always a fisherman in the bridge on the other side of the little barrier that they make for the ship so they don't crash into it or make boats, and uh. But then uh, usually on the other side or on one side is almost always a boat ramp there too and they want you. We kind of noticed most of the leave no wake signs were around boat yards and, and boat ramps. And it makes sense because, you know, if you're on a, on a highway going over a bridge, there's usually an exit to a boat ramp, especially down here. They have a lot of boat ramps. So we learned that. We also learned in Florida, was it only in Florida where the speeds were... If you're inside the channel in the intracoastal waterway, intracoastal waterway, I did it again. Um, you can go, you can go 30 miles an hour. Again, they do everything in statutory miles. Of course, I'm doing 25 knots, so that's more than you I was kind of speeding to. a little, I guess. But, but in the channel, you can do that. If you leave the channel to go fishing, it's a leave no wake area because of manatees and stuff, and it's it's weird because. I'm like, I guess you asked your cousin some, about it. What did he say? Today? He, he said that's that's right. But it was funny because we were getting confused because they'd have leave no wake markers that that face you, you know, so you can read them. And then they had them parallel with you, so you couldn't read them until you saw it. And and I'm like, that doesn't make. Then I figured it out. I'm like, you know what? That's to go on the other side of this, you know, if you if you're cutting in. And uh, that was kind of kind of weird. That took us. Kind of a while to figure out and I confirmed it with a cousin that lives in Titusville which is right near Cape Canaveral which I, I had I known that then we would have stayed there because with that we were debating whether to go to Titusville or, or further down to the Indian Beach Harbor or whatever it is and we elected to go further and then have a short day the next day but um so we've yeah, covered all the topics that we had written down that we wanted to cover with you guys. So any more questions, shoot them out. Um, we're happy to uh, discuss them. We are going to... And you can comment on my... On my on Dave my said new, you look like look. Ernest Hemingway. Ah, there you go. Thanks, Dave. 
I could bring my guitar out and sing a song. He was going to ship it back today, but after he found out what the scooters cost, he decided he was going to carry the guitar yeah. on the boat on the plane. Yeah, he said the hell with that. But uh, never played the guitar the whole time, and we had no TV. That's how tired we were. We get here, we usually we usually tie up. We By the time nap, we gassed up, we nap, tied then we, up, then we go to dinner, and then we come back and crash, and then well, seven o'clock the next day, and it was usually seven thirty when we got off because it. The sun didn't even come up until like quarter past seven most of the most of the days, so I didn't want to start out at night. And very dewy in the morning, so I had a squeegee wiping down the windshield, and that didn't really burn off because then it just come back on you, so you couldn't really see too well. A long-handled squeegee is recommended. Yep, we bought another squeegee. We were using the one we used for our... We taped the bathroom one to a long oh, stick. Oh, you were going to show them the boat. No, you're going to show them the boat. I'm not. You're going to hold the thing and walk around? No, you are. Well, I can't do that and show them the boat. Don't want to walk around. I'll, I'll, no. Because some people wanted to see see the boat, so. Okay. We'll, we'll show you the boat. Hang on. All right. You, you're going to hold it? I guess. Well, you got, you got to face that way. I know. Anyway, this is a... Uh, I can't this see. This is the inside. Yeah. I, you just got to walk. All right. Anyway. I can't. That's all right. You, you got it. Anyway. So this is the galley. This area. is our galley. I'm trying to get out of a seat. So Wait a minute, she's squished in. Hold this. Here, yeah, guys. They you like, can look at his they face. They like looking at me. Hi, guys. Oh, All right. Okay. I, you should. You show them the inside. I'll show them the outside. All inside. right. So this is our galley area. Sink. All right. We have a two burner stove here. Refrigerator. Scooch down. Whoop. This is our refrigerator. We have a freezer. Doug's got his ice cream in there. <laughs> We have a microwave. That we have to give everything away because we yes, can't have Yes, we any have food this left. lovely pantry closet that yeah, somebody's going to get a whole lot of stuff. Um, and we have then this couch. This couch folds up into a bunk and with straps off the ceiling. For like a kid. And then this table can drop, scooch down. Am I this, showing it? I, this hard. table can drop down and oh, we have co insert cushions that make a bed here as well. And then turn this. The, turn the light on. Yeah. This is the bathroom. I can't, I can't tell from. We never actually anyway. used any of the facilities.